If you're in the battle for the Lord and right, keep on the firing line. If you win, my brother, surely you must fight, keep on the firing line. There are many dangers that we all must face, if we die a fighting it is no disgrace. A coward in the service, he will find no place, so keep on the firing line. I know you must fight, fight. Be, brave. be brave against all evil, never run nor even lag behind. If you would win for God and the right, just keep, keep on the firing line. God will only use the soldier he can trust. Keep on the firing line. If you wear a crown, then bear the cross you must. Keep on the firing line. Life is but to labor for the master dear. Help to banish evil and to spread good cheer. Great you'll be rewarded for your service here. So keep on the firing line. Fight, fight, be brave, be brave against all evil. Never run, nor even lag behind. If you would win for God and the right, just keep just on the firing line. When we get to heaven, brother, we'll be glad. Keep on the firing line. How we'll praise the Savior for the call we had. Keep on the firing line. We see the souls that we have helped to win, leading them to Jesus from the paths of sin. With a shout of welcome, we will all march in, so keep on the firing line. Oh, you must fight, fight. Be, brave. be brave against all evil, never run nor even lag behind. If you would win for God and the right, just keep, keep on the firing line. Son of thy love, for Jesus who died and is now gone above. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. Spirit of the living God. shown us our Savior and scattered our night. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. Revive us again. Fill each heart with thy love. May each soul be from above hallelujah thine the glory hallelujah amen hallelujah thine 
the glory Like a ship upon the sea. Now who rulest wind and water? Stand by me. And in the midst of tribulations, Stand by me in the midst of tribulations. Stand by me when the host of hell assail and my strength. Who never lost a battle? Stand by me. When I'm growing old and feeble, stand by me. Time. Somber skies and howling tempest all succeed a bright sunshine. In that land of perfect day, when the mist has rolled away, we will understand it better by and by. By and by, when the morning comes, when all the saints of God are gathered home, we will tell the story of how we've overcome, and we'll understand it better by and by. We are often destitute of the things that life demands: want of food and want of shelter, thirsty hills and barren lands. We are trusting in the Lord, and according to His word, we will understand it better by and by. Oh, by and by, when the morning comes, when all the saints of God are gathered home, we will tell the story of how we've overcome. And we'll understand it better by and by. Trials dark on every hand, and we cannot understand all the ways that God would lead us to that blessed promised land. 
but he guides us with his eye and we'll follow till we die for we'll understand it better by and by oh by and by when the morning comes when all the saints of God are gathered home we will tell story of how we've overcome and we'll understand it better by and by oh by and by when the morning comes when all the saints of God are gathered home we will tell the story of how we've overcome and we'll understand it better by and by and we'll understand it better by and Let's see here. Nope, not that one. Let's have this one. Singing I go along life's road, praising the Lord, praising the Lord. Singing I go along life's road, for Jesus has lifted my load. The trusting heart to Jesus clings, nor any ill forebodes. But at the cross of Calvary sings, praise God for lifted loads. Singing I go along life's road, praising the Lord, praising the Lord. Singing I go along life's road, for Jesus has lifted my load. The passing days bring many cares, fear not, I hear him say. And when my fears are turned to prayers, the burden slip away. He tells me of my Father's love, and never slumbering I. My everlasting King above will all my needs supply. Singing I go along life's road, praising the Lord, praising the Lord. Singing I go along life's road, for Jesus has lifted my load. When to the throne of grace I flee, I find the promise true. The mighty arms upholding me will bear my burdens too. Singing I go along life's road, praising the Lord, praising the Lord. Singing I go along life's road, for Jesus has lifted my load. Singing I go along life's road, praising the Lord, praising the Lord. Singing I go along life's road, for Jesus has lifted my load. For Jesus has lifted my load. Last one. We're on the battlefield for Jesus. Come and join us in the fight. We're marching against Satan and we're standing for what's right. We won't desert nor surrender. We are soldiers till we die. We're on the battlefield for Jesus. Victory is our battle cry. We're on the battlefield for Jesus. Come and join our happy throng. We're blood washed, born again believers, and we sing a joyful song. King Jesus is our mighty captain, and it's him we shall obey. We're on the battlefield for Jesus, winning souls for Christ today. Oh, victory in Jesus, my 
Shall not be put to flight by faith. We know we have the victory, and no matter what the cost, we will fight to rescue hopeless sinners. Not a soul must ever be lost. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior, forever. He sought me. All right, good afternoon out there in YouTube, online world land, out there, wherever you're at, whichever platform you are listening on, whether it's Facebook Live or whether it's sermonaudio.com slash Pastor Cooley on the Old Paz Baptist uh, page there on Sermon Audio, or if it is on YouTube uh, there, there are many different platforms that people listen on. And uh, we just we're happy that you found us in one or two places there, or three or four places there, whichever that may be. But uh, anyway, uh, it is one of those days that uh, what an amazing I have just it's been an interesting week for me. I, I you know, actually, the whole month of June, I kind of waged that spiritual war on the sodomite agenda and preached very strongly about that movement preached very strongly about uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, about, you know, the uh, the characteristics, and really just did a lot to wage war against Satan's kingdom. We went out and preached the Word of God um, and preached the Bible uh, out there and, um, you know, to a lost and dying world, had a bunch of satanic attacks. Uh, from the devil in all sorts of different areas, uh, waging war against uh, the kingdom of darkness there. And, um, you know, it's it, it's been one of those times. And then I, I'll tell you what, I don't know what it was, Sunday after I got done preaching that hard message on Sodom uh, and um, Sodom's influence on the saints, after after I got done preaching that, it really just... Uh, Boy, I I woke up Monday morning, and man, I had the most crazy attack and of anxiety and things on my mind that I've had in years, probably. And uh, you know, some things I just had to pray through and seek God's face, and you know, really get the victory over and and get God to strengthen me and and. Uh, all those things that the Lord would have us to do when we go through those those trials and tribulations and things of that nature, you know. Um, it, it was just amazing, really. And then, man, I'm telling you, it got so bad. And about probably 4 o'clock in the morning, I woke up. And if you ever, if you have anxiety ever, Anxiety doesn't quit when you go to sleep. If you go to sleep, anxiety, what it does, it just, it keeps going. Like it'll work through your dreams. The devil can use that and afflict you through those things. And, uh, but it'll work through your dreams and it'll work through, and then you wake up and then all of a sudden your mind is just in this. And usually when you wake up, it's because of, of anxiety and different things like that. And I haven't really had to deal with that much Lately, the Lord's given much peace and victory over that and time and everything like that. But 
Anyway, so those battles, right, of the mind and the heart and everything like that, going through that, and then all of a sudden, um, you know, boy, this morning, it really hit hard. And the Lord led me to pray very aggressively uh, yesterday afternoon. Um, to pray very aggressively in the afternoon. Uh, and I never know why. See, God takes his generals in the, in the army of the Lord, and I don't say that lightly, but I mean his pastors and those men that are on the front lines of that battle and being a shepherd to sheep. And, you know, I preached on that comfort of the Holy Ghost. That's right, Brandon. When you were there on Wednesday, I preached on that because I believe that and I've experienced that and I've lived that. And, you know, but I woke up fr uh, Friday morning, this morning at like four in the morning. My brains were just really bombarded. It felt like heat-seeking missiles were firing off at me. And man, they were they were just... They were just really uh, coming for me. <laughs> and uh, it's funny because I look over at my wife and I'm just like, oh, I can't sleep. And I said, I really need to talk. And she was like, okay. And she couldn't sleep either. Come to find out she hadn't slept that well either in four or five days. About the same time. See, when you're one flesh like that, you you don't that relationship is very deep. It's very personal. It's very deep. Uh, it's connected. It's connected. I mean, you're connected. You're one flesh. That that means something. That's not. And although as a pastor, there are some things that I do you know, that she can't be a part of in that sense, right? Because of the office of a bishop is an office that is alone in the administration of that office. It is an office that is, a, that is alone between you and the Lord. But as a man and as a husband, as a father, and as, you know, she's intimately involved with everything that I, that I battle and go through when it comes with that. And it's so interesting to me that, but her and I talked for an hour and a half. And we talked until the daybreak. And, you know, it, the Lord used it. And we prayed, and the, the Lord used it, uh, that time for her and I to just to talk. And I'll tell you what, Satan was trying to convince me as best he could. Oh, you don't want to talk to her. You don't want to talk to your wife. You don't want to, you don't want to talk to your wife at all. You don't want to, you don't want to uh burden her with that. You don't want to put that on her. You don't, you don't want that to be on her. You don't, you know, you just deal with it yourself. And sometimes the scariest things that go on in your mind are things that you got to get out to somebody else. And um you know, you got to just get that out to somebody else. And it was interesting because after we did that, the Lord really used that. And I was able to kind of drift off to sleep for another hour and a half or whatever it was. And sure, I'm tired. It's been a long couple of days, but, but um, it was necessary. It was needful. And I thank the Lord for my wife. And it's, it's kind of interesting that this, the timing of this, because I get attacked a lot. About a number of things. <laughs> one of those things is one, one attack that that Satan likes to use against. Oh, you hate women. You just you just. I had this lady tell me, this woman tell me that likes to preach on Facebook. She really likes to preach on there, and she likes to rebuke men on there. She really does. Well, I had a post on there about infant baptism. How it was of the, it's of of Rome. It's of the daughters of Rome. That's where infant baptism comes from. Prove it wrong, I dare you. 
You won't find it in the scriptures anywhere. Anyway, so that made this lady mad because she had a dog in the fight. And she said, she began to say how much I hate women and you just hate women and I don't find the spirit of Christ in you at all. That's the same thing they say about the Apostle Paul, by the way. He, he must have hated women. No man outside of the Lord Jesus Christ did more for women than the Apostle Paul did. When he straightened Corinth out and the Gentiles out who didn't even know what marriage was, they had a bunch, they had a bastardized worldly view, view of marriage. They had open marriage and polygamy. They had all kinds of, of rotten, wicked things and fornication, everything else. They treated their women like garbage. They didn't treat, they didn't love them. They didn't care for them. They didn't cherish them and nurture them. Paul went into Corinth and he straightened Christian marriage out. He explained to them what biblical marriage was and he straightened them out. And after that, that got exported throughout all the world. That changed the whole world. Historically speaking, that changed, the and, and spiritually speaking, that changed the whole world. The world was never the same again after, after Paul explained the truth of Christian marriage. Then it was never the same again. Because men no longer had any excuses or anything like that. And, and they weren't allowed to, they weren't allowed to uh, treat their women any old way they wanted to. God told them exactly how in the scriptures, how they were supposed to treat. Paul nailed that thing down, man. He set it down and they couldn't argue with it. Just the way it was. So anyway, but I thought it was interesting how somebody would accuse me of that over and over again. And I, I was telling somebody else, they have no idea how many times I've been stuck in the fifth rib standing up for women that weren't treated right by their spouses. You have no idea how my reputation, so to speak, has been on the line, how I've been maligned and lied about and everything else. I'm not asking anybody to feel sorry for me. I'm just telling you, they have no idea about that. That's not something, I don't talk about church business online. I don't talk about things that, uh, with the local New Testament church at Old Paz Baptist Church. I don't talk about the personal lives of people. Even after they leave, I don't talk about it. Even when they go and they slander me, if they lie about me, I, I, don't, I don't mention their names. They, I, I let them do all the lying they want to do and spread all the gossip they want to spread, and I just keep serving the Lord by the grace of God. It won't be me that didn't help them. It won't be me that slanders them. They, they slander themselves. I don't say anything. I just let it go. I trust the Lord through it. Anyway, so I say all that to say, you know what? It's important that you pray for pastors. It's important that you pray uh, for one another. And because you really don't understand sometimes the weight and the pressure that that people are under when it comes to uh, different things out there. Amen. There's people. Now, if you have not listened to this right here, you need to listen to this, the Satanic Church co-founder, false Christian conversion. Uh, you need to listen to that. The Satanic Church's co-founder, the South African Satanic Church's co-founder. If you haven't listened to this broadcast yet, listen to it. As I predicted, by the way, let me find that. I think it's right there. Nope, that's not it. Uh... Nope, that's not it. Hang on, I gotta find my page here somewhere, the right page. I lost it. I gotta get rid of all these other ones. Maybe is it that one? No, it's not that one. This one I need right here, but I'm looking for my other one, so you have to bear with me a second. I'm trying to find that. There it is, right there. Let me put that over there. Move this one over here. There we go. Okay. So. Amen. Anyway. Uh, so there, there's work to be done, right? There's always work to be done uh, for the Lord Jesus Christ. And we are soldiers that continue to battle on. Amen. That's the work that we do. Now, 
Uh, let's see. Let me go here. The dissenter. Now, I want to show you some crazy charismatic things here. Um, uh, I want to show you some crazy charismatic things here, and then we're going to get to soldiering on, and we're going to talk about a few things like that. But uh, we're going to look at some of these things here. Here's, here's one in particular crazy psychopath thing here. Bethel Church in Redding, California is pastored and co-pastored by Bill Johnson and Chris Valentin, respectfully, who believe themselves to be prophets and apostles of God. Bethel is well known for its debunked manifestations of the Holy Spirit, including its infamous spectacle known as Glory Clouds. The Glory Cloud spectacle has been thoroughly debunked and its various other acts of blasphemy. Bethel Redding is essentially a cult that revolves around the visions of its two main apostles while minimizing the truth of Scripture. They have the Bethel also runs the supernatural school called the School of the Prophets, which is more like um, the school that you would watch in Harry Potter. Uh, in fact, one ridiculously stupid testimony from a prophetic deliverance ministry who trained in Bethel. She claims that while she was in a mental hospital, Jesus walked into her room, climbed up in bed with her, and started playing with her hair and telling her a bunch of crazy things. We talked about that before, right? Another student shared this profound testimony. After the last session, my wife and I felt filled with the spirit. We went to dinner at a diner in the hilltop neighborhood. A waitress stated, seated us and gave us menus. When she came back to take our order, she looked at my wife and said, I know what you want. You want the fish and chips. My wife said, that's right. The waitress got excited and then turned to me and said, well then, I'll bet you want a Reuben. I said, that's right. She got really excited and started running around the whole restaurant telling everyone she had guessed the whole order for two customers. We talked about this later and realized that this was an instance of someone being activated by the presence of spirit-filled prophets. This was the same as King Saul being activated when he entered the company of the prophets. Uh, what a bunch of absolute nuts. This is crazy. Charismatic hour. That's right. That's what it is right there. Uh, let's see here. I just thought of something. Let's see here. Let's see. But you think about that for a second. Here they are, a bunch of witches. Runner, I'm so tired of witches. I'm so tired of witches. Because that's what they are. They're a bunch of false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. These are false apostles. That's what they are. They are deceitful workers. I wonder if I can find the one I was looking for. Let's see here. Here it is. So watch this. So Creflo Dollar's non-repentance repentance. It is not a real biblical repentance. People are wondering, did Creflo Dollar repent? No, he didn't repent. Creflo Dollar got rich, and he's got some sorrow, but he, didn't, he never repented. He's still going to keep doing his old ways and his old things. I'll start off by saying to you that I'm still growing and that the teachings that I've shared in times past on the subject of tithing were not correct. And today I stand in, in humility to correct some things that I've taught for years and believed for years, but could never under, 
understand it clearly because I had not yet been confronted with the gospel of grace, which has made the difference. I won't apologize because if it wasn't for me going down that route, I would have never ended up where I am right now. But I will say that I have no shame at all at saying to you, throw away every book, every tape, and every video I ever did on the subject of tithing, unless it lines up with this. I've, I've done some corrective teaching in the, in, the, in the last 10 years, but not to the degree of what we're getting ready to do now. So why is this important? Because religion is sustained by two factors, fear and guilt. And if it's one subject that the church has used for a long time to keep people in fear and guilt, it is in that subject of tithing. And it has to be corrected, and it's got to be corrected now I may lose some friends. Preachers may not ever invite me no more, but I think I've already been through that, so it doesn't matter. That man is not repentant at all. If you think that guy's repented, then you think Benny Hinn's repented too. He announced that he'd been teaching on the doctrine of prosperity in a shocking video. Hinn admitted that he's been preaching a false prosperity gospel, that giving money and sowing seeds is a false gospel and an affront to the gospel, and that he wouldn't be doing it any longer. Hint explained that he had been moved by the gospel and grace and repentance to change his ways. Like a dog that returns to its own vomit, it didn't take long, however, for him to keep moving forward with the false teachings. In fact, it took less than an hour as the commercials in that very episode where he had made his, this claim to repentance, asked for people to send seed faith money to him in exchange for prosperity blessings. Right? For example, these guys, that's what they do. This appears to be a growing phenomenon in the prosperity gospel cult. A few years ago, later, another false prosperity teacher, Todd White, did something similar and even invoked the name of Charles Spurgeon, a preacher who would rebuke Todd White into the floor to prop up his false repentance. For example, 2020 White preached a sermon where he claimed that he had begun reading Charles Spurgeon, George Whitfield, and Ray Comfort and said that these men had helped him understand the gospel in a way he has never understood it before. Being that these men he named are some of the most solid evangelists in history in modern times, one would be led to believe that he would want to emulate these men in their theology. Despite the fact that he claimed to be following these men, he continues to promote unsound theology, false doctrine, and a false understanding. Now, in the latest example of this phenomenon, Creflo Dollar has been propped up relentlessly by men like Kenneth Copeland. Jesse Duplantis also did something similar in a recent video. He claims he'd been convicted of his false teaching on tithing, but says he won't apologize for it or step down. I, you know, I won't I'm sorry, I'm still growing. Right? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm still growing. Oh, really? Okay. Well, maybe if you haven't even grown into the gospel, you probably shouldn't be preaching to anybody. And you really, really, right? You really, really should not be accepting any money from anybody. Right? Think about that. But they do, don't they? Why? Because they're charlatans. They're not real. They don't, they haven't turned from any sin. Right, the Bible talks about these certain men that have crept in unawares who are of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness, right? By the way, it didn't take long for Charismania News Let's see. Let's 
see if I can find it. Let's see. Let's see. Let me see if I can find it. Let me see if I can find that. I think it's on... Oh, in fact, I know where that, that girl had, or I'm sorry, not that girl, that lady. I apologize. Not that some girl or whatever. She's a lady. Um, she's not a child. Uh, let's see. Let me get to that. I want to show you something here. If I can find it. Here it is. Here it is right here. Uh, let's see. This is breaking news. Is this one from? This one is not from uh, the charismatic news. Let's see if I can find them on here. Uh, Carl, if you find that article. Oh, here it is. Let's see. Oh, no, Sean. This charismatic. Carl sent this. Carl, if you can find that article on... Um, from charismatic news, send it to me, would you? I'll post it. Uh, but this is what, uh, Carl found this one, Sean Fucht, or however you say his name, founder of the satanic church encounters Jesus during ritual, gives his life to Christ. Well, I outlined this on Wednesday's broadcast that that man is not saved, but the charismatics eat it up. The charismatics, they run with it. Just like I said they were gonna. They're going to run with that because they like the signs and wonders and they like the, the psychic stuff. They like all of it. They love it. They absolutely thrive on it because that's their same false gospel that they preach. Just like Creflo Dollar, just like all the others. This is, this is, that's what they preach. They have a powerless gospel. And they, they look for signs and wonders and all of those other things instead of the pure power of the gospel, the power of God unto salvation. They don't look for that. They don't look for that. They don't want that. What they want... What they want is a sign, a wonder, a gift, a external sign. That's what he wants. That's what they want. That's what they do. By the way, it's an adulterous uh, and sinful generation that seeketh after a sign. And there shall no sign be given. Right, but the sign of Jonas a prophet, saying, Repent ye therefore, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Look at this. CN Morning Rundown. Miracle of miracles. Satanic church co-founder finds Jesus in incredible transformation. It's not. I showed you why it wasn't real. I showed you. If you, if you didn't see this, you go back and you look at it. It's not real. Thanks, Carl, for that. It's not real. Hannah, if you're listening, which you probably are, can you grab me some water? I need to get some water out here. It's hot in here for some reason today. It's probably just me because I didn't get enough sleep, but whatever. But here's Charis Charisma News, and what are they doing? Man, they're running with it. They are running with it. Right? what they do that's that's what they do that's who they are they like the signs and wonders charismatic charismania stuff they love it they absolutely love it 
They don't care if that guy's conversion. That guy said some woman, you want the long and short of it? That guy said some woman walked up, some Christian woman walked up, gave him a big old hug after he said he didn't believe there was a Jesus, gave him a big old hug, and then one week later exactly, he was doing a satanic ritual to get power, and then this false Jesus appeared to him. He says it was Jesus appeared to him, and he was cocky, and then Jesus flooded him with love. Jesus doesn't flood cocky people with love. Let me show you what Jesus does to those that are cocky. Let me show you what he does. Here it is right here. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. For God resisteth the proud but giveth grace to the humble. Right? God resisteth the proud. Wherefore he saith, here's the second witness, James 4, 6, but he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. That's why when you hear Ray Comfort, which I'm not supporting his ministry, he says, law to the proud, grace to the humble. That's what he's talking about. That's what God says. He got that from God. He didn't invent that. God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he'll draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn and weep and let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of God, in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. Thanks, hey, son. Anyway, so that's what the Bible says. When you have people that tried, he is like Simon the Sorcerer, Kieran Wilson. That's exactly what I like in him. Just like Kanye West. Same thing. They hold on to their billions. They hold on to their the God of this world. And then they add a little Jesus to it. And everybody just runs to it. Everybody just runs to it. The, the principle is that God will scatter the proud. So he's like, oh, I was being cocky with Jesus. And then, you know, Jesus just looked at me and flooded me with love. And everybody told me, and he's, by the way, he's a sodomite. And he didn't repent of being a sodomite. He said it's okay to be a sodomite. God's okay with that. What gospel are you preaching? I know the gospel of the satanic church, the gospel of the charismatics. Never once did any of those fools actually look at what he said. When did those charismatic fools ever look at what he said? Look at what he said. What did he say? He said that he said that he was and I was told for years that I could not be gay and be a Christian. That's right, you can't be. That's what the Lord said. Paul said it very plainly in 1 Corinthians. But what happened? Oh, he was doing a satanic ceremony, and he had a visitation and signs and wonders. Well, what's it sound like? Bethel Redding. Where the woman's sitting in her bed, and Jesus appears to her, and comes in and lays in bed with her and plays with her hair. Oh, I think of being, you say, she's making that up. No, no, I don't think she's making that up. I think some being named Jesus, another Jesus, bar Jesus, another Christ, another gospel, I believe it came in, I believe that spirit got in bed with her, and I believe that spirit played with her hair. Just like I believe this little occultist 
had another Christ visit him. Right? I believe that this guy had another Christ visit him. Absolutely, I believe that. Or should I say, absolute and fruit and lutely? Let me say that again. Absolute and lute and fruitly. Something like that. I believe that. Of course I do. I do believe that. Of course I believe that. Some fruity form of a false spirit, another Jesus came and visited him. That Caesar Borgio fruity Jesus. Right? That one came and visit. I believe it, don't you? Of course I believe it. What did he ask for? He asked for a sign. What did he get? He got a sign. Let me show you. Here it is. Let's look at it. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now let will be let until, let until will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan. With all power, what did he ask for? He wanted power. He wanted power. What did he get? He got power. All the charismatics are like lapping their tongues. Believe in him. All the charismatics believe him. They all believe him. They're not. They, they believe him. They don't have a problem with it. They're like, yeah, of course. Right? They're like, we believe him. We know you believe him. Absolutely. We know full well you believe what, what, him what he's saying. Because that's the, you all have the same spirit. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. You know what you got to do? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Not looking for signs and wonders and manifestations and all these other things. But God hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath made heir of all things. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness and them that perish. Because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Well, what's the lie? The Antichrist. That's the lie. Who's the truth? Jesus. Who's the lie? Antichrist. What did he believe? Well, he's doing a satanic ritual. And some guy named Jesus appears to him. Some spirit named Jesus appears to him. And then he goes on in his story to go talk to spirit guides and angels. Oh, yeah, I do that every day when I'm praying. I just talk to little spirit guides, right? Huh. Well, that's kind of weird. I don't remember the Apostle Paul talking about that. And that he has healing. This guy says he got healing power. Right. 
And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Let me tell you what I believe about that man. I believe he sealed his fate. I believe that that man is a reprobate. I absolutely believe that. Now, can I prove that? No. Would I stop preaching the gospel to him? No. Do I believe he's a reprobate? Yep, I do. I do. By the way, I know other people that have come into this ministry that are no longer here. That were like those that were like that guy right there. And they did the same thing. Little satanic plants. And I think they're reprobates too. I really do. I absolutely do. Why? Because they, they tried to destroy the work of the Lord. Not from the outside, mind you, like Saul did, who was lost. Then he became Paul through the gospel, the grace of God, and he was different. But, but, but like Judas, Judas was a reprobate. Tried to damage the Lord's ministry. Tried to damage the Lord's people. Tried to damage the Lord's... I believe that's what this guy's doing. I do. I absolutely believe that's what this guy's doing. Right? I believe that's exactly what this man is doing. I believe that's his I believe that's what he's being used of Satan to do. But the charismatics are are lapping it up like lap dogs. They're accepting it like lap dogs. But this is what the Lord said would happen in these last days. Right? So, but the charismaniacs are jumping on board. Why? Well, that's, that's who they are. You're going to find out a bunch of these people are going to jump on this guy. Because he said Jesus. Because he said manifestation. Because he said vision. Because he said all those things. They are going to jump on it. And they are going to accept what he said. They're not going to look at fruit meat for repentance. But these, they're, they're going to accept what he said, right? They're going to accept what he said. And they're going to follow him. If you want more on that, then you can listen to this and get the entire teaching on it that I taught on it, okay? It's right there. Uh, that's Wednesday's broadcast. You can get it on YouTube or you can get it on Sermon Audio. Or it is actually also on on Rumble. It's right there on Rumble. Look at that. There's Rumble. We only have 86, 86 people on Rumble. I'm trying, folks. I'm trying. We just got to steady build the platform. But that's that's a good video. That That's a good place to go and, and watch it, too. We are working on We have not started broadcasting on Rumble yet because there's some things that we have to do first. So we're, we're looking into that. But anyway, that's who that guy is. That's what they accept. And uh, unfortunately, that's that's who the charismatics are, right? 
And I mean, there's so much more you could say about charismatics, but I really don't want to spend a ton of time uh, on the charismatics, really. Um, but I do want to, we'll play this song here, and we're going to talk about soldiering on in the battle here. Um, I like this song here. Wait, actually, I'm going to play a different one, I think. Uh, let's see. Amen. Soldier on. That was by Abigail Miller. Miller. You can uh, you can get her music on YouTube, but you can also order it uh, through like Apple Music or whatever kind of app, whatever kind of uh, music streaming service that you have. Uh, you know, so uh, hopefully you can look her music up. She's a good lady, uh, good godly lady, good godly family. Her and her husband and her children sing together, and. Uh, 
blessing. Uh, those things are a blessing. So anyway, uh, you ought to try to listen to that uh, if you can. Uh, get get good music. You need good music in your life and in your heart. Uh, it'll help you. It'll help you to grow. Uh, it'll help you to walk with God and to live for Him and be strengthened in the faith. Amen. So I want to talk to you a little bit about that, about that soldiering on. You know what I mean? We are, the Bible calls us soldiers. You know, um, and especially his generals or his preachers as well, his pastors, his men that uh, are to be watchers for other men's souls, they they have a duty to continue on uh, and to fight the good fight of faith. The, the Bible, the Christian life is a life of fighting and warring. It's it's a life of soldiering on. It's a life of, of, of marching. You know, and I was thinking about that even this morning. Uh, when I was talking to my wife into the wee hours of the morning, you know, through everything, and I was talking to her about it. And the one thing that through all of the things that the Lord has brought me through, the different trials and tribulations and everything that, you know, uh, God strengthened me for, you know, the the thing that, that he left with my mind and heart with that is that you have a duty. And your duty as a Christian is to endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. He says first in verse number one, in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse number 1, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men, who shall be able to teach others also. But he warns him. He warns him when he's going to do that. You know, hey, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And additionally, he's saying, and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. So the duty of a, of a Christian, the duty of a pastor, the duty of a, a child uh, of the king, and the duty of a, of, a, of a faithful man is to teach others also. This is God's way. But he warns that preacher, because Timothy is a preacher, and he's a young one, and he warns him, Thou therefore... Endure hardness as a good soldier. In enduring things and in going through things and in trials, we have to endure hardness as a good soldier would endure hardness. As a soldier of the Lord, we have to soldier on, right? We have to continue to fight the good fight of faith. It's a war. He says that this Christian life is war. Thou therefore... talking to him specifically. He says to him that as you're a Christian soldier, as you're a good soldier of Jesus Christ, no man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. 
there's a war. And the one thing that the Lord showed me through the war and the battle of this Christian life as a soldier of Jesus Christ, one of the things that God showed me is that you have your orders. That is stuck in my mind and my heart through the darkness that I went through for many years. You have your orders, soldier. What do I mean by that when I say that like that? What I mean by that is that if you never heard from me again, which is impossible because we have the word of God, right? But if you never heard from me again, you have your orders. If you ever face desertion and and discouragement and doubts and fears and and uh, maybe depressions and you you feel as if you don't hear from God. You have your orders. You know, if you ever have any mental health things happen to you, uh, anxiety, depression, discouragement, doubts and fears, all those other things, confusion comes in the mind with those things, panic and fear. The one thing that the Lord showed me that that I have to always remember is you have your orders, soldier. You, you have them. Yeah, but what am I going to do? My mind and the and the things that are going on and the discouragement and depression and and lack of sleep or or uh, just the trial that I'm in, the things that I'm facing. You're a soldier. You have your orders. They're not divine suggestions. That's why he says, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast learned of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. You are not allowed to run. You are not allowed to abandon the ship. You are not allowed to give up. You've been given your marching orders. We are marching to Zion. We have our orders. We've been given them. We don't draw back. We are told by the Lord many times over. Thirty-six times. Be strong. Be strong and of good courage. And Joshua said to them, Fear not, nor be dismayed. Be strong and of good courage. For thus shall the Lord do to all your enemies against whom you fight. Then shalt thou prosper if thou takest heed to fulfill the statutes and judgments which the Lord charged Moses with concerning Israel. Be strong and of good courage. Dread not, nor be dismayed. Why? Because you have your orders. That's why. Your orders have not changed. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, forever. And David said to Solomon, his son, be strong and of good courage and do it. Fear not, nor be dismayed. For the Lord God 
even my God will be with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee, until thou hast finished all the work for the service of the house of the Lord. That's the same principles and promises that you and I have today. Be strong and of good courage, and do it. Fear not, nor be dismayed, for the Lord God, even my God, will be with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Right? Be strong and of good courage. Fear not. That's what God said to Joshua over and over again. Be strong and of good courage. For unto this people shalt thou divide for inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. This is God's promise, right? Be strong and of good courage. We have a duty before God, and that is to soldier on, that is to continue in the battle, that is to keep fighting, right? We are soldiers, and we've been given orders. What is the good fight? This was Spurgeon called this his dying manifesto. Right? I like what he says. He says, but thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. I give thee charge in the sight of God, who quickeneth all things before Christ Jesus, who before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good confession. What is he saying there? Jesus was in the belly of the beast, the entire Roman Empire. And he says, I give thee charge in the sight of God who quickeneth all things and before Christ Jesus, who before Pontius Pilate. Witnessed a good witness. Witnessed a good confession. That thou keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable unto the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's his, that, that's Paul. Paul talked about that. Spurgeon had a great sermon on that. He called it the Christian manifesto. manifesto. You know, Paul is getting ready to die here. He says, but watch thou. Actually, he says, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. They shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things. Soldier. Watch thou in all things. Endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. So here's Paul's parting words of a general to his other soldiers. For I am now ready to be offered and the time of my departure is at hand. He says this, I have fought a good fight. What, what fight is that? That's the good fight of faith. Hang 
Hang on a second. Twice. Here's the good fight. 1 Timothy 6.12, he tells Timothy in his old letter, his first letter, Fight the good fight of faith, Timothy. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. Now Paul tells him at the end of his life when he's getting ready to die. He says, but watch thou in all things, soldier. Be on your watch, soldier. Be on your watch. A soldier is at attention. A soldier is on watch duty, right? On watch duty. They're to keep a watch of everything. But watch thou in all things. Endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. I have fought a good fight. That's what he says from one general to one of his soldiers. He says, I have fought a good fight. Amen. He calls it before the good fight. But every man, every Christian man has his own fight, his own battle. My battles are not the same as yours. Your battles will not be the same as mine. The circumstances, overall, the war is the same. The war is against the kingdom of darkness. I have fought a good fight. Paul said, man, he said, I fought a good fight. I have finished my course. He wasn't on the course of this world. He was on the course that Christ put him on. But he says, in my course, I have kept the faith. That's the good fight. The faith is 43 times in the Bible. Jude talks about it here. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write of you the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. That's the fight. That's the fight that we're on. Paul is warning Timothy that you're in for a fight, Timothy. And on that course you're on, Peter warns us in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse number 12, Beloved, Think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. Man, I'm going to tell you what, this morning at four o'clock in the morning, I thought it strange. <laughs> Think it not strange. But I saw God's provision and his care for me. I saw how he, he did not leave me comfortless. But I saw how he encouraged me and he strengthened me. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice. Inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad with exceeding joy. Thou 
Danielle, don't let it bother you. I'm just focused on what I'm teaching right now. And the way my brains are working, I can't multitask. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just can't today. I can't jump off. I did hear, though, about the Japanese prime minister. I did hear about that. And um, it's very sad. It's very sad. And I, I he was assassinated by somebody that, uh, unfortunately, that didn't like uh they were disgruntled by uh by him the he's anyway they were disgruntled they were a disgruntled old military uh person uh soldier i guess from what i understand that's what my brother-in-law told me who was stationed in japan uh for a number of years so <clears throat> excuse me paul talks about fighting the good fight of faith he talks about laying hold on eternal life. He talks about the man, no man that warreth entangled himself with the affairs of this life. You know, now he is talking about the, he is talking about Timothy is ordaining elders in every city. Timothy is not to be entangled with the affairs of this life. Timothy has work to do. Paul is encouraging him and exhorting him right to fight to continue to fight the good fight of faith that he not give up that he not back down that he not get discouraged you know there's timothy was really discouraged you can see it in paul's writings um here's another example of that in second timothy chapter 1 verse number 7 paul is writing to timothy to encourage him as a young pastor. He's an old pastor. And he's an old apostle, obviously. But he's trying to encourage Timothy. He says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, according to the promise of life, which is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my dearly beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father in Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I serve for my forefathers with pure conscience that without ceasing I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day, greatly desiring to see thee, being mindful of thy tears. That I may be filled with joy when I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that in thee also. Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance, thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting out of my hands. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me as prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given unto Christ Jesus, given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. So there's this battle and there's this war that Paul is talking about. And he's explaining to Paul that he must soldier, or to Timothy, that he must soldier on. He explains the same thing to the Ephesians. You know, he goes through all the order of the Ephesians, the proper order in the church, in in in, in uh, Ephesians chapter four, he explains the the purpose of the assembly, and then Ephesians six. After he lays down that order, he tells them, "You know what." Masters and servants and children and husbands and, and fathers and mothers and wives. Then he, he says to seal it all up. He says this. Finally, my brethren. He's ending his letter. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Uh. 
<sighs> okay, Danielle. I understand. We're just trying to keep things focused on here. <laughs> oh boy. Anyway, I'm going to play a song here real quick and then I'll get I'll get uh I'll get to the rest of this teaching here. Amen. What a good song. Farther on. I like that song. Uh, anyway, all right, let's get back to what we're talking about here. Uh, Ephesians chapter 6. Paul's talking about the war. We're talking about soldier on. We're talking about continuing on. We're talking about fighting the good fight of faith, laying hold on eternal life. Paul is going to talk about the armor that's going to help to equip you, which is the Word of God, which is the Spirit of God, which is the work of the Spirit, and the gifts of the Spirit. Okay? Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. So in order for us to even get the armor on, uh, we've got to have the grace of God. You have to be strong in the Lord. 
and in the power of his might. Um, we have to be strong, and, and, and the power comes from the Lord. The power to even put the armor on is from the Lord. And that's where it is. So we need to remember that. So, put on the whole armor of God, he says. So take that power of his might, that's the power of the Lord's might, and put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Wiles. That's a trick. That's a strategium. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Our battles are not against flesh and blood. They're not. Our battles are spiritual battles. The war that we're in is the war of faith. It's fighting the good fight of faith. That's what it is. Fighting the good fight of faith. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Our battles are spiritual battles. Our wars are spiritual wars. But against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So he warns us again. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. So he says the whole armor. It's important that you and I understand that, that we need the whole armor, right? We need the whole armor of God. that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. We are to stand, right? So God is telling us that we must stand in that time. We are soldiers. We are to stand at a post. Well, I will be distracted for a second and ask Mark Ryan a question. Why does it look like you have a picture of a tranny in your in, in your profile pic? I, I'd really like you to answer that for me. Why does it look like Mark Ryan that, that there's a picture of a tranny in there? Because that's what it looks like. And your name is Mark Ryan. And it looks like there's a picture of a tranny in there. I'm just curious. Can you answer that for me real quick? I'm, I'm just, I'm, why do you have a picture of Rudy Giuliani as a tranny in your picture? Are you promoting that? Or are you against that? Are you here because you want to hear the truth? Or are you here to cause trouble? I'm just curious. Okay. That's all I wanted to know. I just wanted to make sure. Sounds good. That's all I wanted to know. Four. All right, it says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Against the wiles of the devil. The devil is wily. The devil has a strategium. He has attacks. He has tricks. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore. So there's, there's the wiles of the devil that we face in this world. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness, high places, wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand 
in the evil day. Look at that word, withstand. Withstand. To with and stand, to oppose, to resist, to withstand the attacks of troops. To oppose, to withstand, to resist. We're to resist the devil. That's the same word as that withstand. He talks about standing a lot. There is no sitting on the sidelines. But there is a standing. He says it over and over again. That you're strong in the Lord. That you put on the armor of God. That you're able to stand. It's God. It's God who makes us to stand. It's God who makes us to be able to conquer. It's God that is that gives us the ability to stand. He gives us the strength and the endurance. Endurance in this Christian life comes only from the Holy Spirit of God. It comes only when we are connected to the Spirit of God. It comes when we are in communion and fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ through the power of the Spirit of God. All right, everybody, let's not turn the chat into some kind of war against each other. Let's just listen and learn. We all need this lesson, and I'm telling you, Satan wants to distract us all from this. He wants to distract us because he wants to divide and conquer. That's what he wants to do. Get everybody biting and devouring each other so we don't hear the truth. Don't fall for it. So... Don't, don't fall for it. Let's just keep going, all right? Don't fall for that. The devil doesn't want this message to get out. So we can, he can distract us with all kinds of things and, and with friendly fire, right? We're going to be friendly firing each other and shooting at each other spiritually with this friendly fire. It doesn't, it's not going to help anybody, right? It isn't going to help anybody. Let's not do that. Okay, it is God that makes us able to stand. You look at where how many times he says that, to stand, right? He says it many times over here. Put on the whole armor of God to stand against the wiles of the devil, right? Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand. It says it again. Then he says it again, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. Having your loins girt about with truth. You stand. Where are your loins at? It's the center mass of your body. It's the strength of your body. The strength is in the loins, right? It's your core. The Bible is dealing with the core strength. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. It must be truth. When it is truth and your life is based on truth, when your life is based on the truth, then we can stand. Right? Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. Breastplate, right? That's in the, on the body. That's it. For a soldier, it's nearest and close to his heart, that breastplate is. 
That breastplate is important. Right? That blessed breastplate of right, righteousness to your heart. Covering and protecting your heart. What does the Bible tell us about that? Look what it tells us. Proverbs 4.23. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. The breastplate protects the heart. The loins are girt about with truth. The core of a man, of a Christian man or woman, their core. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Our hearts are be kept. We're to have a watch on our heart. We're to have a guard on our heart. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Hey, Pastor Cooley, Daniel Adams of Supernatural Life made a post about you in regards to your video on the Satanists. Good. And if he doesn't like it, tell him to get in line. There's a long line of other heretics that don't like what I have to say about it. I know what the gospel is. I'm not confused. My loins are girt about with truth. I have on the breastplate of righteousness. I'm not some phony charismatic running around that doesn't know the gospel. He can call me a Pharisee all he wants to. I love it. Let him call me a Pharisee. Let a guy that's believing in a false gospel call me a, a Pharisee. You think that bothers me? Man, that just makes me want to run the race even more. That makes me want to put my armor on and say, let's go to war. Let's do this. I'm ready for it. My loins are girt about with truth. I've got the breastplate of righteousness on. I've got my feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. I've got the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Amen. You don't like it? You don't like they don't like it? They don't have to like it. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. I'm not surprised that those charismatics are mad at me. They better be mad at me. They should be mad at me. They preach a false gospel. You better believe I draw a lot of fire. Anyway, all right. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And let me tell you something right now, friend. Let me be very clear with you. Any day a man wants to say that he did a satanic ritual and a fake Jesus appeared unto him and some woman gave him a huggy-wuggy and that makes him saved? Well, I'm against that gospel. And he's still a sodomite practicing sodomy? Saying he's going to heal people? Saying he has psychic powers? And saying all those things? You better believe it. I wear that like a badge that I'm against that. Any day of the week. Any day of the week. You better believe it. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God unto salvation. Amen. I know what the gospel is. I know it ain't some hug from some woman, and it sure ain't no appearance of some vision of Jesus in a satanic ceremony that lets you stay a sodomite. Amen. Boy, that's a little bit, that right there is just a little bit too, that's just a little bit too much of a dose of truth for people. They can't handle. They don't like that. You want to get me fired up, you go ahead, you go ahead and say it. It's 
fine with me. I'm I'm all right with it. I'm all right with the charismatics not liking me. You want to know the great what the best group? The best group are are the, the the most opposition I have ever had. The most opposition I have ever had is from charismatics. Infiltrating little witches, little satanic charismatic witches trying to infiltrate our church, trying to trying to destroy the work of the ministry, all of it. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. All, the shield of faith. The shield of faith. By the way, that's, that's what we all need. The shield of faith. Because it quenches all the fiery darts of the wicked. That's what it does. That's what it, that's what it does. All. Not some of the fiery darts of the wicked. All the fiery darts of the wicked. All, and above all, it says above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith wherewith he shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation. And take the helmet of salvation. That's right. Salvation is a helmet. Right? It's a helmet that you need, right? Get your head straight. Because Satan comes, you got that, you got the shield of faith, and then you got the helmet to go on your head, right? To protect you, to protect your mind and your heart. Protect your mind, right? And the sword of the spirit. You got to have your offensive weapon. You got to have your sword. You got to have the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. You got to have the sword. You got to use your sword. The sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. The Bible says the word of God is quick and powerful. And sharper than any two-edged sword. Right? It's quick. What does that mean? For the word of God is quick and powerful. You know what that word quick means? It means alive. It means alive. The word of God is alive. It's living. We have the living word of God. Right? It's alive. God's word, they are words of life. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. God's word is very powerful. That's the power of God unto salvation. It's the gospel. It's the word of God. It's not some vision that you see. It's not some 
manifestation that you see. It's the word of God. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. That word can divide. Piercing even the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and the joints and marrow and as a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. That sword cuts through all the thoughts and intents of the heart, the motives of the heart and everything else. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open in the eyes of him with whom we have to do. says which is and he and take the helmet of salvation the sword of the spirit which is the word of god now it says praying always praying always praying with all prayer and supplication that's what it says praying with all prayer that's a weapon by the way that's the other offensive weapon Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. So we are to pray as a weapon when we're in, we're in that warfare. We are to go to God and we are to pray. And God gives power in prayer. God gives strength in prayer. God gives guidance in prayer. God gives direction in prayer. He gives wisdom and strength in prayer. That's what God does. He gives strength in prayer. We need that. We need that weapon of all prayer. See, a lot of times praying always, that praying with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, we forget about that all prayer. We need all prayer. You and I need it in our lives badly. We need all prayer and supplication the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. We're to watch. We're to pray in the Spirit. We're to watch with all perseverance. Pray and watch. One of our weapons of our warfare is to watch, to be alert, to pay attention, keep our eyes spiritually open and aware of what's going on around us, to know the state of thy flocks, to know the state of the situation that you're in, to under, understand it very well, right? We're here to do that. It's very important. We're to soldier on. We have our orders to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That's what, that's what we're to be doing. We have our orders. By the way, no matter what you're going through, it never changes 
It never changes. What are what God's commands are for us? It never changes that. Like God's commands never change. He never changes his orders. No matter what confusion you go through, no matter what problems you have, no matter what trials you have, you're a soldier. You've been given directions. And you're to follow those directions until the Lord takes you home. You're not allowed to deviate from those. You're not allowed to move away from those. You're not allowed to depart from, from those things. But you have a duty before the Lord to follow those things. To make full proof of thy ministry. Whatever it is that God has called you to do and to live for him and to serve him, right? You're called to that. You're called to that. You're called to faithfulness. You're called to follow the Lord. You're called to be obedient. You're in the Lord's army. That's the duty that, that, that you have before God. And the one you ought to follow above all else is obedience to the Lord, no matter what it is that you face, no matter how hard it is. And it will get hard sometimes. We will have wars and battles, and we'll get tired and weary. The Bible warns us, be not weary in well-doing. For ye shall reap if you faint not. We will. We will, we will reap the goodness of God. All right, everybody, I'll give you a chance to say hi here. I'm going to play a song here, give you a chance to say hi, and then I'll be gone. In the dark of the midnight Have I oft hid my face While the storm howls above me And there's no hiding place Mid the crash of the thunder Precious Lord, hear my cry, keep me safe Till the storm passes by Many times old Satan whispered, there's no need to try For there's no end of your sorrow And there's no hope by and by But I know thou art with me And tomorrow I'll rise where the storms Never darken the skies and when this old long night has ended and the storms come no more let me stand in thy presence on that bright peaceful shore in that land where the tempest never comes lord may i dwell with thee when the storm Passes by till the storm passes over Till the thunder sounds no more Till the clouds roll forever from the sky Hold me fast, let me stand in the hollow of thy hand Keep me safe Till the storm passes by Guide me, O Thou great Jehovah Pilgrim through this old barren land I am weak, but Thou art mighty Hold me with Thy power and bread of heaven feed me till I want no more bread of heaven feed me till I want no more amen all right, that is the blessings of God till the storm passes over. Amen. Um, 
anyway, God bless you all. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I hope you're all, um, doing well anyway. I know you, I know, uh, <laughs> there's a lot of, a lot of arguing back and forth here, unfortunately. Uh, Brandon made it home safe. Good to hear, Brandon. Good to hear. I'm glad you're doing well. Uh, chain break. We will definitely, let's pray for you and your father. Now, Father in heaven, Lord, we pray for, uh, uh, chain break. Uh, we pray for uh, her and her father, Lord. We pray for healing. God, please be with them. It's discouraging to be sick like that, and and uh, Lord, it's a dire situation for her father, and I just pray that you would be merciful to them, and Lord, that uh, you would heal them and, and take care of them, Lord, and, and Lord, just meet their needs and, and, and provide that special healing and peace in the heart. Uh, through these trials, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, anyway, all right. Um, Dwayne McEnroe, glad you're here. Any thoughts on the Georgia Guidestones? Well, I'm glad they're gone. Uh, no, Void, you're not Satan. <laughs> Anyway, please pray for our ministry. Uh, pray for uh, the work that God has called us to. We're going out preaching tomorrow. I'm tired, so pray I get some good sleep. Would you all just do me a favor and uh, pray pray that uh, I get some good sleep tonight. Uh, just pray that the Lord would grant me some good rest tonight, and I'd sleep very soundly through the night. That would be a blessing if you would please do that. If that's the Lord's will, if not, then... I guess I'll be up all night, but but uh, I know that the Lord will hear your prayers, and I'd appreciate it if you would please uh, pray that uh, for me. Uh, that would be a blessing, for sure. Uh, and uh, just pray for the work that um, that we're doing, okay? Uh, and uh, the gospel work tomorrow. We were gonna we are gonna be going out preaching uh, tomorrow at a festival somewhere, and uh, just pray that the Lord would bless. Bless us and take care of us, uh, you know, and uh, meet our needs. Also, please pray. I I've got uh, a big heat bill due here for the month. Or I'm not for the month, for the winter coming up. And you have to pay by contract in advance for propane. Otherwise, in the, the heart of winter... Oh boy, it'd be bad. Um, anyway, so pray that the Lord uh, would just meet that need. Uh, we've got to come up with some money here and, and pay some extra money here. Uh, and, you know, so just pray if that'd be the Lord's will that um, that, uh, that that would go well there with that. Uh, sorry to hear, Dwayne, you're homeless. I hope you can find something. Um a place to live and a job and, and be able to take care of yourself. I'm sorry to hear that. Um, and uh, just pray for his needs and, and his situation that he's in. Um, let's see. Oh, we are going to take 1,500 tracks with us tomorrow. So you pray that we're able to hand those tracks out and uh, that the Lord would continue to uh, use us as a witness for Jesus Christ. And that'd be a blessing. Amen. For sure. Um, and um, anyway, okay. But if you would like to give to our ministry, you can do that through sermonaudio.com slash Pastor Cooley. Uh, you can do that through salvationpreacher at gmail.com. That's PayPal. Or Apple Pay, or people do cryptocurrency, all kinds of different things um, that uh, they do to help out. So anyway, or they mail something in. Uh, if you can't do any of that, uh, that's okay. Just pray for us. You know, um, that's of the utmost importance. Prayer is always of the utmost importance. Amen. Because God uses prayer. Amen. He uses it. Uh, all right. Anyway, well, God bless you all. And uh, take care. And we will maybe stream live tomorrow if we don't have absolute crazy psychotic meltdown satan possessed meltdowns from sinners that are trying to kill us uh 
if we have a normal kind of, we had to watch our back too much. There was no way that was going to work. So anyway, I appreciate it. Uh, God bless you all. Take care. And we'll, 